Okay, here we go. Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hi, so what is going on? Why is it like that? I just wanna say so quickly, like I know this is not what this video is about, but like why is everything like, why does it have to be like this? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand why it has to be like this. Please, I'm gonna list some unproblematic beauty YouTubers in the description box. Please go look at them. Please go follow them. This is not what the beauty community is supposed to be, and that has been my biggest problem with all of this from the get. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it, because this video is gonna be a million years long. So Tati uploaded a video today. We've been waiting. It's been kind of alluded for a while that she's gonna be uploading a video. She has been tweeting kind of cryptic messages with songs attached to them and everybody's been analyzing what it's gonna be. Everybody was like speculating on is she gonna be leaving YouTube? Is she gonna be announcing something crazy? Is it like an announcement of a brand? Is she exposing Jeffrey and Shane? Which is what ended up happening. So she posted the video. She dropped it. I honestly have a lot of thoughts. Um, the very first thing I want to preface all of this with, I think it's kind of important, is I do believe that there is truth to what Tati is saying. With that being said, I also last May watched the Bi Sister video and found truth in what she was saying and found it all to be very credible. And it turned out that a lot of that information was not credible. And we all jumped and attacked um, before hearing both sides. And I have to say, based on what Shane and in turn Ryland have said so far, I do not have a lot of hope for the other side, but I just want to preface it with that. I thought Tati's video had a lot of truth to it, and I'm going to talk about where I thought it did, but I also did feel there were a couple of points where I was like, okay, let's, you know, come on. I really feel that this situation in particular, just everything revolving around James Charles from last year, I feel like this is a perfect example of two sides to every story and somewhere in the middle is the truth. I don't think from one of these people we are ever going to get the 100% truth because I think they all did things at one point in time that were not great. I don't think this is a situation of like good guys and bad guys. I think at one point in time they all probably did things that were not great. But I also think that since that happened, two of the players, being James and Tati, have stayed relatively out of drama and have apparently seemed to show a level of growth, at least on the internet, and two other people have not done that. They made a series, you know, <laughs> alluding to all of this. Uh, one of them has, I made a whole video about Jeffree Star, I don't know why I'm even beating around the bush, made a whole video about how I feel about Jeffree Star's handling of this yesterday, and Shane, his whole thing is imploding right now with everything going on with him. Don't think that's gonna fly under the radar, on this channel at least. So that's kind of where I stand right now. Tati started her video basically, her the whole first five minutes of the video was really just kind of about how she kind of wanted prayers, how hard this had been for her, how much she had missed people, and then at about the five minute mark she started to kind of dig into it. Um, she did talk about the fact that this state, she was reading a statement the entire time, and she did say that she did write that statement herself, but that that had been the statement that was approved by her legal team. So that is what she felt comfortable sharing. Personally, I think that was a great idea. I think more influencers should do that, especially when talking about these types of topics. I know it might seem inauthentic to be reading something. However, I think it can be very difficult sometimes to get your words across and your thoughts across. I think putting a statement down that was approved by her lawyers was a very smart call. And I also think she did that because I think she's going to be suing people. Like, actually, I think she's going to start suing people. So, so I'm very interested to see how that goes. She basically said at the beginning of the video the first person she owed an apology to was James Charles. She said that her and James had met in December of this past year, so December of 2019, and they had compared screenshots, talked about what had happened, and basically made amends in the situation. 
it. She said they both apologized to each other, which I thought was really interesting, and that now they're kind of on the same page with all of this, where they both feel like something happened behind the scenes that manipulated Tati. I will say I was very surprised, I guess, by that. I was surprised that they had met and that James had, for all intents and purpose, had forgiven her. I was really surprised by that, I will say. I don't really know if there's any commentary to give on that, more that I was just like, wait. <laughs> What? She then dropped kind of the first statement. She said that Jeffrey had basically been kind of in her ear for a while about James and how he was, you know, annoyed by him, how he was doing things. He was kind of telling Tati all of these things about James and she kind of blew it off as just Jeffrey being kind of jealous and then said that none of her kind of fears were confirmed until she met Shane Dawson. So right off the bat, she is basically saying that Shane Dawson played a much bigger role in this whole situation than he initially let on, especially in his most recent, I don't want to call it an apology. Abby called it a manifesto and I thought that was really good. So in his most recent manifesto. One point I will say, and again, I feel like if James already accepted her apology p privately, then I'm not really going to sit here and criticize the public apology she gave because really the only person she owed an apology to was James for her video. If everything about it was like, there was like misleading information in it and it, but she did kind of say like I didn't have any malicious intent with making the video and she also made it very clear that she was not the one who called him a pr um and I to that I have to say while she did not come out and say he's a danger to society like Jeffrey Star said she did plant those seeds similarly to how she's claiming Jeffrey was kind of planting the seeds for what he was going to do about James she definitely planted that seed in the mind of people that allowed Jeffrey Star to come forward and then say all of the things he said about James so I do feel like that's important to note here I do feel that, and again, if she privately apologized to James and he forgave her, that's like the best thing to do. But at the same time, it did feel a little bit like she did not take 100,000% accountability. It did feel like it was, I'm sorry I did this, but kind of situation, which I think, especially when it caused what it caused, <laughs> when it, what it, like what this did to our community, like uh, the, the outside world knew about this. I had, it was craziness when this happened. So I do kind of wish that she had taken just a little bit more accountability, but again, she apologized to him privately. I think that's the more important thing. I think just me as a person who like is invested in all of this stuff because I follow it was like hoping that she would be a little bit more take accountability for it. One interesting thing I noted about this video was that she talked about the fact a lot of people speculated that she deleted her by sister video because James Charles got lawyers involved, but she actually went on to say that that's not true. And she said the reason she deleted her by sister video was because YouTube asked her to take it down, which I think that statement in and of itself could literally be an entire YouTube video, but I do take issue with the idea that YouTube as a platform was like, hey, you calling out somebody for potentially doing really damaging things is bad for our platform, so you need to private the video. Like, I take issue with that. I think it would have made more sense if she had, like, had a mediation with James and had worked all of it out behind the scenes, and that's why she took it down. But the fact that just YouTube took it down and asked her to take it down because it made James look bad, a little sus to me on YouTube's end. I also realized, as I was watching her video, the ramifications that all of this had when James Charles lost all the subscribers, we literally can't use as YouTubers or anybody in the public can't can't use Social Blade anymore. Social Blade is irrelevant because it can't give you proper statistics or accurate numbers on subscriber counts anymore. And that is a direct result of the James Charles thing. They stopped sharing those numbers and stopped sharing their analytics with Social Blade so anybody in the public could see subscriber counts because of the James Charles situation. So much happened as a result of that that wasn't just James Charles getting canceled. There was huge ripple effects throughout the YouTube community that I feel like people People kind of have forgotten about because it's it's been so long it's been a whole year since all of this happened after that she kind of goes on to say that she didn't have the malicious intent she truly just wanted him to put his phone down and like listen to her because she felt that there were victims that were about to come forward that were going to kind of ruin his career she then goes on to apologize to Jackie Ina um, basically she talked about her history with 
Jeffree Star when she met him, when she started filming with him, kind of how their friendship was. She described him as a lion where he was really nice to her. She knew he was very vicious to other people. She basically apologized to Jackie Ina. I didn't know this, but I guess the day after Jeffrey called out Jackie Ina for mentioning his brand in an anti-haul and the day after he called her horrible things and like attacked her, the day after was the first time that Jeffrey and Tati publicly collabed. And Tati basically said she would apologize for that. She should have never posted that collab. She should have listened to other people. Um, and you know, we, I don't know if Jackie Ina's gonna accept that apology, frankly. I don't know. I, that Again, with Tati, it's hard because I do believe a lot of what she's saying here. But at the same time, I just wish she would be a little bit, and I, maybe this just isn't how she is, but I do wish she would be a little bit more owning her own sh because it's like she still went ahead and posted that video, not just because she was excited about the video, but because she knew that it would do positive things for her channel to post that video. She knew it would lead to a gain in subscribers. She thought it would probably lead to uh, more views. Like there were other reasons than just being excited about the content that you were posting that you chose to post that video. I don't wanna seem like I'm attacking Tati because parts of her video are so well done, but it's the beginning part that I was just kind of like, I wish she would just own her her truth like about the whole thing. I also think that would have been when she was apologizing to Jackie Ina, she gets a lot of criticism for being a privileged white woman, which she is. And I kind of wish she had taken that opportunity to be like, yeah, I, I, it was my privilege. Like I wish she had just taken that opportunity, especially given the current climate to own that, I guess. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm being too nitpicky here. I just feel like there's so much to say. She also, when she was talking about the history she had with Jeffrey, implied that he had a large hand in Drama Get Him One, and basically, I believe this is a direct quote, said that should have been a warning sign to what happens to the people that Jeffree Star does not like. And I think that was very interesting because from an outsider perspective of Drama Get Him One, I think if we knew then what we knew now, there would have been a lot more speculation about Jeffrey's role in that. But at the time, I think a lot of us thought it was like, oh, Laura and Manny and Gabriel and Nikita posted that picture and then all this stuff came out. But I don't think it's a coincidence that all of that stuff came out. I think, like, now looking back, it seems pretty obvious that Jeffree Star played a much bigger role in that. She then went on to say that Jeffree Star has dirt on everyone in the beauty community, brand owners, beauty gurus, which is kind of like, duh, he's said that. He's literally made Snapchats where he's like, Everyone. And they know to keep their mouth shut. <laughs> Which is like, how have we just been accepting that? Anyway, um, one point that I actually really liked that she made was she kind of went off script, I guess, and was basically like, I personally think he is going to go off. And I think he's going to start releasing things to try and deter attention away from him. And I think a lot of this dirt he has on people is going to be exposed. And I really feel like we need to be prepared to forgive people. We need to be prepared to allow people to grow and we need to be prepared to not cancel the entire community. You guys know me. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm definitely a little bit more of a hold people accountable regardless type of person. However, I actually fully agree with that. Um, first of all, I don't think 90% of information from Jeffree Star should be credible. And I think any information he possesses lacks context because she also went on to say would trap people into saying things they normally would not say. And this kind of leads me back to Peter Mon, what he's been talking, this whole thing's like a web, I swear. It's crazy. Um, I always, whenever I talk about the situation, I feel like Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> Be like, it's, it's a conspiracy. That kind of reminds me of what Peter Mann has been saying, which he said, which again, this is such a massive game of telephone at this point, but he said that Gabby Hanna told him that Shane Dawson told her that Jeffree Star uses the N-word and tried to get Shane to say it. And honestly, that all makes a lot more sense now, if you think about it, if you think that he wanted those receipts on somebody. He wanted to have dirt on somebody. It's the same thing Thomas Halbert said, which I don't 
don't know how much of his story is like legit. Thomas Halbert said that Jeffree Star used that language around him. And you have to wonder, why would he openly be using that language when he know he's been criticized for racism if he wasn't openly trying to catch somebody else doing something? I also think now we've heard from multiple people that Jeffree Star has this dirt on people that would just blow your mind. And it's kind of like, how do you collect all of that? How do you keep all of that? What kind of person has to have files on people? Like, I'm pretty sure only, I've only ever seen this in political things. Why would you have a file of dirt on somebody ready to release? It just seems weird to me. And while I agree with Tati that we can't just cancel the whole beauty community, and if this does happen, and if he does start mass releasing receipts on people, I think what is imperative is not even necessarily, oh, forgive. Because if somebody said something messed up, you don't have to forgive them if you're hurt by it. Like, that's that's not the narrative I'm pushing. However, I do think that if he does start doing that, we have to take it for what it is, which is a distraction tactic. That means that he's trying to actively distract people from the situation at hand, which is what he's done in the past. Whenever somebody calls him out, he pulls up what he has on them. And it's worked for him this far. So I do think it would be very nice, and maybe this is a little too idealistic, but as a, because I do think that people are kind of invested in the tea, I personally, if he starts doing that, am gonna hold off on talking about any of that until after it's done. And I would hope that other commentary and drama channels kind of follow suit and that we can just kind of stick with this story and stick with the people that really need to be held accountable right now and deal with any sort of receipts he has on other people later. Because right now, I think as a community, there does need to be a sense of unity in that it almost feels like we have this massive, I don't know how to say this without sounding mean, it feels like there's a poison in the beauty community. It does. It really does. Having been in this for three years, I've been through all three Dramageddons, like, the common denominator is always Jeffree Star. And I think Tati brought up a very good point in the sense that the reason he continues to prosper is because we let him. We fall for his games. We kind of fall for his tactics. And I think it would be really nice as a community to stand up and be like, hey, not gonna do that anymore. So Tati then goes on to say, over time, Jeffrey was planting more and more seeds. And then she said that Jeffrey told her that Shane Dawson wanted to meet her and that Shane Dawson loved her. And Shane Dawson reached out to her, they talked in DMs. Tati again went on to say that she did not know about, she really denied knowing anything about Shane's past, which again, I just, I, I wish she would just own it a little bit more. If you've been on YouTube for 10 years, I do find it difficult to believe you didn't know anything could have possibly been problematic with Shane. Like again, I just wish it had been owned up to a little bit more. I just think when you're not 100% like real and not 100% owning, owning the parts where you messed up, it makes it feel a little bit less credible, even though I feel like it's credible. Does that make sense? Am, do I, am I making any sense at all? I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just how I felt. She alleges that Shane told her all of this initial tea about James, that Shane told her they wanted her to be in the series, that Shane told her the series was evolving into a series about James, that they were going to be interviewing victims, that he had that he had a and basically says Shane Dawson was the main, more credible person that she really believed because she couldn't believe why a person who was sort of known on YouTube for getting to the truth would lie about something like that. Tati also went on to say that she, the night before she filmed the Bi Sister video, she did hear the voice note. I have a whole video from yesterday about the voice note, so if you want to know my thoughts on that, you can go watch it. I can't, re I can't relive it right now. But she also went on to say that Shane, in his statement saying that he didn't play a role in Tati's video is a lie. Tati alleges that Shane offered to help her edit the video, offered to help with the thumbnail, and offered to help with the title. So that shows that he had a pretty large investment in the video, if that is true. Uh, Tati also questioned how other outlets and news outlets and drama channels knew about her video before she was even 100% sure that she was making it. And Shane, he did make a statement, very brief, 
very bad, and I will talk about that at the end of the video, but Shane did say in his very brief and bad statement that uh, Tati was the one who contacted the drama channels first, but we do know for a fact, be from Ashley Kyle's video, that Jeffree Star was one of the people who contacted Ashley Kyle at the very least and gave her a heads up on Tati's video. Tati also said in her video, and this part is a little bit triggering and a little disturbing, so if you want to skip like a minute ahead, um, Tati also said that she texted Shane the night before her video worried that uh, James Charles might jump off of his hotel room, basically. He was in Australia on a very high floor, and she talked about being very worried about that. And uh, she alleges that Shane said that James was a narcissist and that he would never do something like that. And um, for me, that is disgusting. She says she has a lot of receipts that she can't share for legal reasons, which I do believe that she probably has a lot of receipts. I also believe the other side probably has a lot of receipts, but that seems like something, she said it was in a text conversation, so that seems like something she could verify, and she claims she's going to eventually, whether it's in courts or not. Um, so I will say that was pretty disgusting to hear that. Hear that that's something Shane might have said, really, really gross to me. It just so downplays what trauma can do to people, and what effects it can have on people and downplayed how serious I think the situation was. I have to say the next part she talked, Tati talked about that she is a victim of and that she heard these allegations. She just felt heartbroken by them basically. And when she heard the voice note, she wanted, you know, justice for the victims. She believed it, you know? And frankly, I really related to that part of the video because that's honestly how I felt last year and even this year hearing that there is possibly a voice note out there. And I know based on my comments from yesterday's video, that's how a lot of you guys feel. I think if you have been through trauma like that, your first instinct is to believe that story, believe that person. That is your first instinct. I do think that we've seen it in other cases of people kind of weaponizing the fact that people believe victims now and they weaponize that and use it to lie. And I think that that's messed up, <laughs> obviously. I related to that part of Tati's video, especially because I just, like that's how exactly how I felt. What she was describing when she was talking about the voice note and the allegations is exactly how I felt last year and this year. Tati also talked about how after uh, she dropped her video and the day she was gonna drop her video, Shane actually asked to come over and film and that she declined. And then Tati described how after she dropped her video, after Jeffrey tweeted all of those things, um, no evidence came forward about James and no victims came forward like she thought they were going to. She also said Shane Dawson never showed her the trailer for the series, which he did claim that he did in his manifesto. And then this is the, I believe, fourth time that I've heard somebody say they are genuinely afraid that Jeffree Star is going to them. So I just would like to say, Tot, this is getting weird to me that all of these people seem to be genuinely afraid that that's going to happen to them. So Tati said she put all of the information on a thumb drive. She gave it to her lawyers, all of the receipts she had. She said she moved to a different state and then moved again a few months later because she had upped her security because she is genuinely terrified for her safety. She said her mental and physical health drastically deteriorated the past few months after everything happened, which I fully believe it did. I do think that even though she did upload the video, I think she took a really massive hit from everything when it didn't feel like Jeffree Star, who even though he didn't make the first massive video, made some very serious claims and then never backed them up, uh, didn't really get hit at all. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I honestly could make a whole video. That girl Shay XO just did a really interesting video about sort of the sexism that is in the beauty community. And I think that probably played a part in it. I also think obviously her video was a lot more talked about, but I think to say that Jeffrey didn't play a part is naive at this point. That basically says that she is going to probably be suing them. Um, I don't know if that's like real, if she's gonna do that. I don't know if that was just a threat, but it does seem like she is lawyered up and it does seem like she is looking into options to sue. I don't know who she would sue, probably Shane and Jeffrey, for damages and defamation and other things like that. And she did say that if she was going to sue, that her lawyers would have to call a lot of people to come forward because she did say that this included way more than just Jeffrey and Shane. And you know, I really wish that she had explained who. And this is, I think, a big problem with these videos is that we as the viewers 
are still, even at this time, only getting part of the story. So all we can do is speculate and theorize and yeah but but that just doesn't do any good because you can't prove anything so i will say that is one frustrating aspect of all of this i i understand where she's coming from where she can't give everything away because if she does want to pursue things legally i get that but at the same time as much as it's like oh well you're a commentary channel you should love when this happens i don't because then i'm like who am i supposed to do? i'm also a consumer of beauty content and it's like who am i supposed to trust who am i not supposed to trust who was in on this crazy scheme who wasn't it, it's leaves so much doubt surrounding the community as a whole that i do think it is a little bit frustrating she also alleged that jeffree star is a co-owner of morphe which a lot of people have been speculating for a long time and also says that james charles was allegedly supposed to start a makeup company with the founders of morphe and also says that morphe is coming out with vitamins she thinks it's a little too convenient that morphe would be coming out with vitamins and they were trying to kind of kill off a competitor that whole side of it I think she was definitely theorizing there that whole side of it with the Morphe thing it doesn't super add up to me and maybe I just need more context if Jeffree Star really is a co-owner of Morphe or owns shares in Morphe you would think that he wouldn't want James Charles to do bad because the James Charles palette made them so much money so you would kind of think that that would be against what he would want business wise um but i guess personally that does make sense and also inevitably morphe and in turn jeffrey would have made a ton of money off of a james charles makeup collection so ruining him and like destroying him doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me Hi, it's editing me. I also want to point out that if Jeffree Star is in fact a co-owner of Morphe and he has not been disclosing that, then that is a massive violation of FTC guidelines. If he's been promoting the products and not discussing the fact that he is a co-owner of the brand. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out was it would almost make more sense to me if Jeffree Star was not a co-owner of Morphe or like had money in Morphe. It would make more sense if he didn't, but wanted to. And that's why he wanted to push James out. I don't know. That's just a theory. <laughs> just, just thinking. More proof that we think she's probably going to sue them is that she heavily insinuated that their statements, Jeffrey's statements on the Mom's Basement podcast and Shane's statement in his manifesto were incredibly defamatory and that she was well within her legal right to sue them for those statements. She ends the video talking about a charity that she wants people to donate to and that she will be donating all of the AdSense to and that's kind of the video. My final thoughts on the video before I move on to Shane's reaction are... I'm just going to recap what I said in the beginning, basically, but I do feel like there's some truth to what she's saying. I do feel that Jeffrey and uh, it seems Shane did actually, you know, manipulate the situation to make it seem worse than it did. They kind of planted those seeds in her head to kind of persuade her to make a video on the topic. I also think it's pretty obvious that she's telling the truth that Jeffrey Star does have receipts on everyone, that he does cause a lot of drama amongst the community, but I think we as consumers already kind of knew that. I also think it's good that her and James have kind of squashed their beef. I think that's great. And I also believe that she will take legal action. With all that being said, I do wish Tati had just been a little bit more, I don't want to say hard on herself, but kind of. I wish she had been a little bit more critical of herself and her own actions. Because I think if she had, it would have been much more credible, a much more credible video. The video itself kind of felt like she was trying to save her own name. Whereas I think it might end up coming across that she's just pushing blame onto other people instead of taking full accountability. So I wish she had just been a little bit more upfront about certain things. I feel like what do you have to lose at this point, honestly, to be more upfront about these things. So very quickly after that video went live, Shane Dawson went on his Instagram live for a minute and 45 seconds, which I just have to ask, who is your PR firm? So I can literally never work with them. And he was yelling about how it was a lie and Tati's a liar, like actually yelling at the TV while she was talking. I couldn't believe it was real, honestly. My mom found it on Twitter and sent it to me and I was like, oh my God. And I think the worst part of that whole thing was was he's watching the video and when Tati says this is makes me really upset actually <laughs> I didn't realize how upset it made me until I started talking about it Tati says that she is a victim of her video and Shane rolls his eyes and goes to say who cares but then quickly corrects himself and goes who and then goes oh, she's so manipulative uh for mentioning that she was assaulted and to that I say a gigantic you um 
to ever react in that way to a person trying to share something traumatic. Up until this point, I had not been aware that that was Tati's story. I don't think a lot of other people were aware of that. I don't think that's something she's openly talked about very often. So for you to hear that and your initial response be get over it or um, so what or whatever he was going to say, um, and rolling your eyes and discrediting that and treating that like it's a manipulative tactic. Um, yeah, fuck you for that. That was really, that, yeah, that was bad. You can then hear him continuing to yell and then Ryland says, you can hear Ryland in the background saying, you need to stop, this is really bad. And a couple seconds later, he cuts the live stream. So it was only about a minute and 58 seconds, but everyone on Twitter already captured it. You can find the video on Twitter. And then he tweets out and very quickly deletes, this is a lie and I'm losing my mind. Then Ryland Adam tweets some things out. Tati Westbrook, a master class in manipulation. The only way to save her reputation was to side with the person she tried to ruin. Make no mistake, this 40-year-old woman chose to post a video to her on her own accord. She riled up Shane before doing so to have one of the biggest creators backing her and the chance this would all backfire. Shane very well would have posted a video exposing James had he felt so inclined. No receipts because she didn't want to expose the countless times she told Shane that she was a big girl doing this only for herself. Not today do not try me right now. And then he said, hope you enjoy those sold out vitamins that made you millions in minutes from Shane's support, you two-faced liar. So that happened. Where, where is the PR people? That's all I can say about the Shane and Ryland, how they're acting. Like, where are your, where's your PR team? Why are any of you tweeting right now? And notice Jeffree Star is silent. He's completely silent. I don't know if he's going to say anything. I don't know what he's going to say. I can tell you it's not going to be good. And I can tell you this is not the end of this. But one thing I think is very, very important to note is that Shane, with almost minutes after Tati uploaded this video, with quickness, got on his Instagram live, but you have still not apologized publicly to the Smith family, who publicly called you out for off to their 11-year-old daughter in a picture. You have not addressed any of the inappropriate conduct that has been brought up since you posted your apology video. You have not addressed any of that. You've been radio silent about the hard stuff. But now that we're back to kind of standard YouTube tea and all of that, now you're able to open your mouth and speak. Now you have something to say. Ridiculous. Redi the fact that you're addressing the Tati video before you're addressing apologizing to the Smith family speaks volumes. Jeffrey's silent and he, we, he will, we will probably hear from him soon um, or maybe we won't. I don't know. Like I truly don't know what he's going to do at this point. Obviously more stuff's going to come out and I'll keep making videos if you guys want but like honestly everybody's calling this drama Geddon 3 and it's like no we are still in Sister Geddon okay. This never ended from last year. This is all of the same stuff from last year. The only new information is about Jeffrey and Shane to be perfectly honest. I'm interested to know your thoughts down below. Um, let me know what you thought of Tati's video, what you thought of Shane's reaction to Tati's video. Let me know everything. I'm so interested to hear what you guys have to say because I'm like I don't even know how to process all of this. Um, I love you guys so much. I hope you like this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or dislike or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. It's a very important link. Please go click it. Um, and if you're not from the United States and that link does not apply to you, please make sure you're staying informed, using your voice in a positive way. Along with all of that will be my little social justice spotlight. I have mental health information. If you have found any of the past few days triggering, please utilize that mental health info. And there will also be petitions, uh, places to donate and sort of movements that are happening right now in regards to a ton of different social justice things. So please check out down there. I keep trying to change it up every once in a while, but yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.